Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we've got the Apple TV back on the desk again today because we've got another game controller to check out for it. This is the Steel Series Nimbus and this has been the controller that uh, Apple has been pointing people to who want to play games on their Apple TV. Uh, because it is for Apple devices, it only works on Apple devices because Apple's got their own controller protocol, of course. So uh, iOS, which would mean Apple TV as well as iPhone and iPad, as well as some things on the Mac, but that is it. It doesn't work on other platforms because again, Again, Apple has their own uh, way of dealing with game controllers. This is actually very similar to the SteelSeries Stratus XL we looked at a couple of months ago, and we'll do a little comparison as we step through the hardware. Now, this came in through the Amazon Vine program, and in full disclosure, that comes to the channel free of charge. However, I've had no direct contact with SteelSeries or Amazon. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is reviewing this video before it is posted, and nobody is paying for what you're about to see here either. All right, so let's take a closer look at the hardware here. I'll bring out the Stratus when appropriate to do a head-to-head -head comparison. I really like the D-pad on this controller better than on the Stratus. I, for some reason, it just feels like there's too much distance between all the directions here on their uh, D-pad on this one. It really does uh, really feel a lot nicer as a gamepad on the Nimbus versus the Stratus. Now, one thing to note on all of these iOS controllers is that the sticks don't click. Uh, so you might be a little put off by that because you might be used to that on other controllers. There's no clickable sticks on these things, on any brand actually, at least as far as I know. There might be some that support non-Apple protocols that have clickable sticks, but this does not. Uh, you've got a standard Xbox style button layout here. And one of the things that Apple mandates on these controllers is that they have sensitivity detection on these buttons. So there's some good travel to them. And then the games that you're playing might uh, detect how far down you're pushing them and uh, do some sensitivity measurement of whatever buttons you're pushing. So there are some games that uh, might support that. Uh, one of the things that I like about it too is that the shoulder buttons are bigger on here than they are on the, uh, the Stratus controller, as you can see. So you do have a little bit uh, nicer uh, buttons on the back here. Uh, what's confusing though, is that the hold button here is actually the on off switch. So that is how you turn it on. Even though they call it hold, it is actually the on off switch. I don't know why they just didn't put on off on there versus hold, but uh, that's what that's for. Uh, this one has an internal battery, which the Stratus does not, and you charge it with a lightning adapter, the same adapter that you would use to charge your phone. The battery life is about the same on, the, on this one with the internal battery as it is on the Stratus, which runs on AA batteries. So it's more of a preference as to what you'd like to do, but I, I think it's kind of nice to just be able to plug in a lightning connector here and get it all charged up and not have to uh, futz around for batteries. However, they don't give you a cable or a charger in the box, so you gotta use your existing uh, lightning connector to charge this up. If you don't own an iPhone or an iPad but own an Apple TV, it's the same way you would charge your controller also for uh, the, uh, the Apple TV here. So you can just plug that in there. Your pairing button is right there, so you can pair it up with Bluetooth and get going from there. So I have to say, on, on balance here, just from uh, comparing these two controllers, I do kind of prefer the Nimbus a little bit more, primarily because it does have a much more comfortable directional pad, and those are the kind of games I play the most on my Apple TV in the rare instances that I'm actually playing a game. But let's take a look and see how Sonic the Hedgehog runs on this uh, using that directional pad. All right, so we're gonna start on the iOS version of Sonic the Hedgehog here. And as you can see, things are very responsive. This controller really does uh, have very low latency back to the console. So when I push a button on the controller, uh, the action gets translated on screen very quickly. Very, if actually on a, on a nicer TV than this one, it'll feel a lot like what you might expect out of an Xbox or a PlayStation. So very low latency, uh, very responsive. And I really do prefer the way the D-pad works on uh, this controller versus the Stratus that we looked at earlier. And when I mentioned the disc distance on the directional pad, there's actually less distance that your thumb has to travel to get uh, Sonic to respond. So I don't have to push all the way out to the end uh, to get him moving. So it really uh, felt better there. So really nice experience overall here, especially for some of these retro uh, inspired games or the retro games themselves here in the case of the Sonic the Hedgehog game uh, that really do perform nicely on the Apple TV. All right, so let's take a look and see how the control sticks perform. We're going to look at uh, Breakneck here that's running on uh, the Apple TV as well. And you can see uh, some of the finer movements get translated pretty well, so we're not moving very fast here. And then I can do a broader movement here uh, and get that done too. So very nice sensitivity, a lot of uh, degree of control that you have, and that obviously depends on the game you're playing. But I was very pleased to see how well this controls. It certainly is better to play this game uh, with the thumbsticks than it is with the uh, motion controls here that they, that they kind of recommend using on it. So. Uh, gives you an idea of that. Now, one last thing I want to show you, though, is an app that accompanies the controller. Now, the app doesn't run on the Apple TV, unfortunately. You have to run it on the iPhone or iPad, uh, but it has some interesting stuff on there that I wanted to show you. So let's take a quick look at that before we wrap this up. 
So here is the iOS app that accompanies the controller. Now remember, you can't run this on the Apple TV just yet, at least at the time that I'm recording this, so you'll need to have an iPhone or an iPad in order to get into this thing. But uh, they've got a nice manual here for the product. Uh, you also have the ability to update the controller's firmware through the app as well. You can even set up a push notification to be told when that firmware is available. They also have a list of games that are compatible with the controller. Now this is not as uh, needed now as it used to be because uh, for a while when Apple had just you know, rolled out this uh, controller protocol, uh, there were some games that supported something older uh, called the iCade protocol, which was completely different than what Apple came up with for theirs. Uh, so for a while there were some games that supported the old protocol and not the new one, but a lot of games now, most games now, will support the Apple protocol only. Uh, most of the Apple TV games will as well, but it's nice to just get in here and just see what games are available for it uh, that you know will work with the controller. So um, it's not the easiest thing to navigate, unfortunately. So you do have uh, you know, an alphabetical list, a newest added, and then a top rated, although I think the rating is just, just based on uh, the star reviews it gets on the iTunes store, which as you all know, uh, can easily be gamed. But uh, if you are looking for some games to play that you know will work with your controller, uh, that's where you can find it. So that is the Steel Series Nimbus, a really nice controller that pairs up nicely with your Apple TV, but will also work with your other Apple devices too. I do prefer it to the Stratus XL we looked at just recently because I do think it's more comfortable. I like the directional pad a lot better on here and it has a built-in battery also, which the uh, Stratus lacks. So you do have uh, the ability to not have to go hunting around for AA batteries to get it all working. Works great with the Apple TV, uh, also great with iOS. It would have been nice though if they had a mounting bracket though for the phone. That would have made it a really cool controller to take on the road with you in addition for using at home in the living room. But I can definitely recommend it and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.